This month I am featuring Hog Island Wool as the sheep of the month. And I wanted to show you this is the Hog Island Wool. Hog Island sheep come in a couple different colors, mainly white. About 10% of them are black and this one comes from a black Hog Island sheep. The rest are white and some of them have a little bit of white with maybe a gray color, but majority are white or about 10% are black. A little bit about the history of Hog Island. Uh, Hog Island is a barrier island off the coast of Virginia. In the 1700s, some of the colonists moved to this barrier island called Hog Island with their Hog Island sheep. What was nice about the island is it's a small island so they could let the sheep graze by themselves. The sheep became very disease resistant and parasite resistant. So they were pretty much able to forage for themselves and take care of themselves with the people just collecting them to get the wool or collecting them for slaughter. The problem is that some nor'easter storms hit the island uh, several in one year and it made it inhabitable for the people there. So they took their Hog Island sheep back to the mainland and pretty much abandoned the island. Several years later, the government decided that they were going to buy this island to preserve some of the special grasses that are on the island. And when they went there, they found a herd of Hog Island sheep that had survived. There were probably a couple of sheep that didn't get collected and they multiplied on the island. So very hardy breed without the interception of people. So the um, government was trying to preserve these grasses. They took all of the Hog Island sheep off of the island and uh, George Washington's Mount Vernon estate has taken these sheep in. From some writings from George Washington, they believe this Hog Island sheep was a breed that he had on his own farm. Mount Vernon has the largest amount of Hog Island sheep in the world. Many of the Hog Island sheep that you find in other flocks come from Mount Vernon, and that is the case with this wool here. Um, the Hog Island sheep that I am getting comes from a woman in Virginia. She has two sheep. Their names are Knit and Pearl cute and uh, they do come from Mount Vernon so that is the wool that I am going to show you today if you purchase the wool for the shave them to save them projects you'll get four ounces in a bag and on the label I do try to give you as much information as possible uh, this one is Hog Island the name of this sheep is Pearl it's four ounces of raw wool and it is in the critical list as far as the Livestock Conservancy uh, statistics show. So the Hong Island Fleece is a very dense and springy type of fleece. Uh, they, the VM on this was a little bit of hay um, or straw, but I've picked most of that out. And what I'm left with is a very dense springy. It's not soft. Um, this would not be something that you're going to use for next to skin type of project, but it's going to make a nice fluffy type of yarn, great for outer garments. The staple length on it is short as far as most spinners are concerned. It's right around two inches. And it does have a little bit of lanolin. The lanolin is moderate. It's not really heavy. So this is an easy one to scour. I found just scouring at one time worked with a couple rinses. Every location has a different kind of VM. And this one has some, it's a small dirt that's in the fleece. And I don't know if you can see it. Um, but I'm going to show you what I would do to scour this and to process it. The first thing I would do is just to sort of open it up a little bit. 
it's much easier to get the vegetable matter or VM out of a fleece after you've washed it. And I find that if I just take it and just open it up a little bit and shake it, gets a whole lot of this inner dirt out of it. The next thing I would do, any little bits of VM that I can pick out, there's really not too much in this, in this fleece. So I'm just gonna do a sample of this today. We're gonna take this wool, scour it, and uh, just see how we clean it up. I just wanted to show you some of the dirt that has come out of the fleece here. It's really not that bad but you can see the little specks of the dirt. So the more you shake it, the more that comes out. So we're here in, at the sink. There's our hog island. And what I like to do first is to just rinse it. So I've got some warm water. And a container. With a larger amount, I would let this sit for a while and you can swish it around a little bit to get some of the dirt out prior to your soap being in. Um, moving your fleece around is fine. The less you move it vigorously, the better. That way it does stay more in the lock formation. But this is just a small amount and the water's muddy, but not too bad. So that's good. I'm just going to rinse it under the flowing water just a little bit, give it a press. And already it looks a lot nicer. So today I am going to use my favorite Unicorn Power Scour. Um, you only need a tiny bit and with a small sample I'll probably use way too much. I'm going to run my water until it's as hot as possible and it's somewhere around 125 degrees uh, just out of the tap and that is hot enough to melt the lanolin off of the fleece. Okay, and then just one pump of the power scour should be enough for this quantity of fleece. I'm just going to poke it down in and let the power scour do its work. So the heat from the water is melting the lanolin and the power scour surrounding that lanolin so it doesn't reattach to the fiber. We'll let that sit for about 20 minutes and then I'll come in and do a rinse and we should be done. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes, and the reason for 20 minutes is that you do not want your water to get cold and have the lanolin reattached to the fibers. So it is still quite hot in here. Um, actually, the water looks pretty good. It's not that dirty. I'm going to get rid of that and just rinse this. I said... The linolin content in this is fairly low, so I think one scouring should be enough. And I'm just going to rinse it in the same heat that the wool is at right now. You do not want to go colder because that can shock the wool and cause it to felt. Hotter would be okay. And just swish this around a little bit. What's nice about the Unicorn Power Scour is that it doesn't suds that much, so it's very easy to get the uh, detergent out of the fleece. If you use Dawn, which is a popular cleaner, and with the um, Hog Island, you'd be okay to use Dawn. You have to be careful if you're using Dawn with finer fibers, but for coarser ones, it's perfectly fine. And there we have the clean hog island. Um, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll take a look at how to process it further. So now the hog island fleece is washed. It's clean and dry 
and nice and fluffy. As I look through it, I can see tiny bits of vegetable matter. Um, so what I like to do is, again, just open it up a little bit, shake it. The more you shake something like this, the more open it is, the better the vegetable matter will fall out. Because this is a short staple, I would suggest using cards. And because it's a small amount right here, I'm going to use my hand cards rather than the drum carter. For a larger amount, I would put it in the drum carter. And it's all pretty well opened up. I'm just going to put it on the combs, spreading it out. And then you just want to slowly transfer the fiber from one card to the other. And if you see on the white down below, you can see there's still vegetable matter coming out. And once you have it transferred, I usually just switch hands and card it again. How many times you need to put it through the carter is going to depend on the wool itself and what you want to do with it. Um, this is coming through pretty nicely. I would say two passes is probably good, but I'm going to do one more just to open it up just a little bit more. Because this is a nice springy kind of fiber, I am going to make a roll egg out of it and I will be spinning it in a woolen style. And again, you can see more of the vegetable matter that has come out through carding it. Um, to make a roll egg off of here, I need to grab my uh, chopsticks and I will be right back. To make a roll lag off of a card, you can use anything. Two dowels, um, two knitting needles. I like to use the chopsticks because they're tapered at one end. I put them opposite each other and I'm just going to turn this around. You want to trap the fiber between your dowels, chopsticks, whatever you're using and turn it and then draft it out a little bit. I would normally stick this between my knees and do it, but to keep it in the camera. So I draft it out and turn it, draft it out and turn it. Depending on how much wool you have on your cards, you may want to do this a couple of times. I like to smooth it out and I'll just roll it on the cards to sort of flatten out all that. Now I take one of the chopsticks out, then I can release the other, and there you have a nice fluffy roll lag ready for spinning. And then we'll just pick up the next piece and do the exact same thing. Draft it out a little bit, roll it up, draft it a little more, and roll it up and that's going to complete it. And then just roll it on here or use your hand to sort of smooth it down. Take one chopstick out, the other one, and there you go. All ready to spin. When you go to spin this, it's going to pull it off and introduce a lot more air to it versus using a roving and this is going to be really a nice fluffy yarn when we get this spun. And that is how you process Hog Island fleece. Really pretty, really pretty fleece. Nice, soft, springy, um, but durable. So if you're participating in the Shave Em to Save Em projects, I have four ounce bags of the Hog Island wool available. Just go to my website at funwithfiberpa.com or also Etsy Fun with Fiber PA. 
hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That really does help. Uh, if you sign up for the newsletter, I'm trying to do a monthly newsletter highlighting one or two of the varieties with their history, a little bit of information like this for how to process it, as well as some information about the farms where I've gotten them from and the people who I've met while I was getting these fleeces.